Coming up on Ag Week TV, President Trump talks about farm and trade policy at the National FFA Convention. I'll have the outlook for the cattle market for the rest of 2018. And the old Baker, Minnesota elevator finds new life as a home. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. Trade has dominated the headlines for the last many months, with President Trump taking an aggressive approach to fixing the U.S. trade deficit. The president talked about that and his vision for agriculture at the National FFA Convention in Indianapolis. Spencer Chase had the chance to interview the president to get details. We have the honor today to be joined by President Donald Trump. Mr. President, we appreciate you making the time to join us. Thank you very much. Now, there are a number of farmers and ranchers that were hoping for a quick resolution to the trade dispute with China. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that. In in your estimation, why has this dispute lingered on for as long as it has? Because to make a great deal, I have to take more time. China's been ripping us off for many, many years. They've been taking out billions and billions of dollars out of our country, $500 billion on average a year for many years. They've been living very well off the United States. And you know who understands that better than anybody else? The farmer. They've told me, take your time. We have total confidence. We trust you. If you remember, the same questions were asked about Canada. They were asked about Mexico and what turned out to be a great deal, the USMCA, and a far better deal than NAFTA. NAFTA, to me, NAFTA was a horrible deal. That's why I didn't want to use the name. But we have a great deal. And if you went back a month ago or two months ago, people were asking that same question. Do you think you'll be able to make that deal? We made a great deal with Canada, a great deal with Mexico, and great for our farmers. We made a great deal with South Korea. South Korea was a terrible deal for our country, and now we've totally renegotiated that deal, very much to the benefit of our farmers and others, by the way, but our farmers in particular, as per your question. And the other thing I did is ethanol, E15, and uh, so we have 12 months, E15. Your administration authorized $12 billion in trade assistance payments to farmers and ranchers impacted by the tariffs, but it authorized it in two tranches. And we've seen the first uh, amount, of, amount of checks right. go out, but we, there's been some questions raised about whether or not that second tranche of payments will happen, or if it happens, what the payment rate will be. What can you tell us about the administration's plans on that well, subject? Well, that was my idea to do, and that was something I didn't have to do, but I wanted to do it for the farmer, because during the negotiation, maybe they'd get hurt. And Sonny Perdue, our great Secretary of Agriculture, is the one that's in charge and he feels very strongly that we're going to help until this is all ironed out. So when you say that Secretary Purdue wants to have this help until it's all ironed out, that we can take that to believe that there will be a second round of payments, you think? Well, I think he's not only going to help there, I also think he's going to help with the hurricane that we just had. You've tweeted about the Farm Bill a number of times, and specifically the work requirement language, but you've stopped short of issuing a veto threat. So I'll I'll ask you now, are you prepared to veto that legislation if you're not satisfied? We have a Farm Bill that I can do. I am holding out, again, time. I'm holding out. I'd love to get the work requirements if we could. Farmers want it. I want it. It's the right thing to do. You're going to have a farm bill. But to get it right, I need more time. Now, in that case, even if I have more time, because we don't have enough votes, we have 51 votes. We need 60. And if we don't get more people in, I don't know. I can't tell you that we're going to do work requirements, which I'd like to be able to do. They've been trying to get them for years and years and years. I'd like to do them. Mm because that's what we've done. Mr. President, appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Great honor. Thank you. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue has announced USDA will be disseminating the second half of the market facilitation program payments. Perdue had indicated just a few weeks ago there would not be another payment because of the new USMCA. However, South Dakota Representative Christy Nome says farm state lawmakers advocated for more assistance for farmers due to the harsh realities of the trade war. The fact that these trade agreements show that they're starting to get farther down the process and wrapped up, but they're not finalized. And we still have low market uh, prices that are impacting our ability to cash flow these operations. So uh, they responded and uh, we appreciate that. The amount of the payments is still being discussed as USDA is evaluating market conditions. No one believes progress will be made on resolving the trade war at the G20 summit this month, and that's why Purdue has also announced there will be no trade aid in 2019. Farmers have been reacting to a remark Kevin Kramer made at his second debate with Senator Heidi Heitkamp. 
The October 26 debate featured a long back and forth on trade and tariffs. Representative Kramer, who is a Republican, downplayed the importance of Chinese trade with North Dakota, saying it only represents 1 percent of the state's exports. But Simon Wilson, executive director of the North Dakota Trade Office, says that number doesn't include bulk ag commodities, which account for about $4 billion a year in exports for North Dakota farmers. I think a little of the concern was is is that that means it's really not that big of a deal for us. But in in all in, intents, it is a big commodity and it is the largest ag commodity by a dollar value right now from the state of North Dakota. So it is a big impact when you can't uh, get these uh, shipments out into the international market. Since the majority of soybeans from the upper Midwest are shipped out of ports in Washington and Oregon, those states get credit for soybean exports, even though soybeans are not a major crop for either state. The U.S. Dry Bean Council has hired NDSU economists to study the effects of the trade war on beans other than soybeans. Soybeans have been getting most of the attention because they're a bigger crop. But the Trump tariffs are also expected to hurt the dry edible bean business for a long time to come. John Bertholdt from Thompson, North Dakota, is president of Green Valley Bean Company and a delegate to the U.S. Dry Bean Council. He says the study covers dark red kidney, Great Northern and Navy beans, and they asked for it due to concerns about the future. If we're at a 25% price disadvantage, it's a clear signal to our competitors in Argentina and China and Canada and anywhere else in the world that grows dry beans. It very quickly at that point becomes a multiple year problem for us. You know, we worked hard on these markets for years and it's hard to get them back. North Dakota and Minnesota grow about half of the U.S. dry bean production. They hope to have early results on the study in the next two months. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll show you inside this old grain elevator that's being turned into a home. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. Helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms. And as a result, uh, more people can eat. Explore the convergence of agriculture and technology at Cultivate 2018 on November 15th. Cultivate is an emerging technology in agriculture conference hosted by Emerging Prairie of Fargo. Connect with industry leaders and farmers and learn about how the latest tech innovations are being utilized in agriculture. For more information, visit EmergingPrairie.com. When harvest comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. North Star Ag offers the Loftness Grain Logics Grain Bag Loader to deliver versatile grain storage performance load after load. Loftness's user-friendly grain baggers are easy to load and unload, perfect to get your harvest in the bag. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full-service Meridian Hopper Bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. Abandoned grain elevators dot the prairies, but we met a man who is turning one into his home. If you ever drive on Highway 52 through Baker, Minnesota, you may have seen it. Rose Dunn gives you a look inside. This is pretty grand. 
Scott Doms is an architect and contractor based in Fargo. His business does a lot of remodel projects on older homes, but he's never done anything like this. It borderlines grand and insanity, I guess. He bought an abandoned grain elevator in Baker, Minnesota, and is turning it into his home. There's not a lot of these that are people are hunting me down for yet. Doms found the elevator for sale on Craigslist and bought it for $15,000 in February of 2017. But he stopped counting how much money he spent on the project. If I make this about money, then it changes the whole perspective of it. So it's just kind of nice to not know a little bit. I don't want really ever want to know how much money I've put into it. I don't certainly don't want to know how much time I've put into it. The low cost of the structure was offset by heating costs that ran as high as $2,000 a month in the dead of winter. But Doms has plans to make the building more energy efficient. Have you ever had a moment where you said, what have I done? I just want to live in a new condo in town. Yep. It happens about once a week. What was I thinking? I mean, it's just like, and it's very overwhelming and stressful, but there are those times when I'm driving back out here and I can see this thing six miles out. And as I get closer, I'm just going, I can't, I would have never thought that I would have owned something like this. And it's so cool. Doms has no farm background, but he loves the history of living in a grain elevator. Uh, one of the original fertilizer bags. And he has several original artifacts on display. That's the bin board so they, they could tell what product was in each space. Doms has finished about 2,000 square feet so far with plans to keep expanding. If things go right in the next few years, it'll just be this will all just be an incredible living space. He plans to turn the adjoining bin into bedrooms for his sons. We've cut into another bin um, and we're working to go north into that, what we call the annex. They're all two by eight Douglas fir, one on top of another. The two by eights actually go up to, I think 20 or 25 feet. There's such a crazy amount of creativity that you have to have to do this and open-mindedness. Dom says he felt welcomed by the small town that seems to be happy to have new life in its old elevator. And hopefully it can stand the test of time. My grand plan is that, I want that as my house up there. Lop that gable end off and put a roof deck up. From up there you can see the ridge of Lake, Lake Agassiz. You can just see for miles, it's just, it's just beautiful. In Baker, Minnesota, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. In the future, Dom says he'd like to open a brewery or distillery in part of the space, open it to artists, or rent part of it out for events. Up next on Ag Week TV, the troubled Ashby, Minnesota elevator is back in business after reporting millions in theft. And later, we'll have the outlook for the cattle market. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. Titan Machinery is excited to announce its 2018 Customer Appreciation Sales Event. Save up to 30% on filters, tilge sweeps, and other essentials, November 14th through 30th. Your local Titan Machinery store will also host a one-day event between now and Thanksgiving with additional specials and to introduce you to Titan Value Pro Parts, their value price line of replacement parts. Watch for your invitation or contact your local Titan Machinery dealer for details on how you can lock in the lowest prices of the year. Giving farmers access to data from the elevator right in their pocket. Helping them make better decisions. No more keeping track of paper scale tickets. Innovation. It's always been a part of the farming culture. Integrating directly with elevators to give growers real-time information. All through a mobile app. Your elevator. Powered by Bushel. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. My name is Joel Kaler. 
owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstalk Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. The Ashby, Minnesota elevator is taking steps to recover from a devastating loss. It closed in mid-September after it was discovered $5 million was missing and the manager disappeared. As Mikkel Pates reports, the Wheaton Dumont elevator has taken over operations in Ashby and has reopened the troubled elevator. This is the most extreme case I've personally seen. Matt Brandenberger is operations manager for the Wheaton Dumont Co-op Elevator Company. In that capacity, he's in charge of running the Ashby elevator now as well. It's not the first time he's had to take over a troubled elevator, but this one presents some extra challenges. Usually in an acquisition like this, there's always some sort of hard feelings because somebody lost money. So a big part of Brandenburger's job is customer relations, reassuring people that things will improve. The first few days here, it was standing room only, farmers coming in to talk to me. That's a very good sign. It's a very healthy sign. I think we're going to have very good response in this community. Brandenburger says that they were able to retain most of the previous employees. That's always important for two reasons. One, these are members of the community that need employment. Uh, we don't want to devastate a community further by uh, terminating existing employees. Second of all, they're the employees that are used to and familiar with running the facility and used to the customer base. He says it's also crucial for farmers to have an elevator nearby. There are smaller producers, you know, who don't have the big semis, the big equipment. They can't go long distances to haul their grain. He also wants to assure producers about bringing their grain to this elevator. These producers suffered this year already with contracts they had that weren't honored. The last thing they need us to do is to miss a marketing opportunity again next year. Farmer Dave Anderson is the third generation of his family to haul grain to this elevator and he plans to stay with it. I'm just really happy it's open again. It's good for our whole town, our community here, and good for our family. In Ashby, Minnesota, this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week. Mikkel will have more on this story in the next Ag Week magazine. And here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Across so much of the northern plains and Corn Belt, this harvest season is turning into something of a nightmare because of the persistent cloudy, cold, and wet weather. And for the moment, that is not changing. Look for this cool weather to get even colder. There will be some areas of the northern plains, Rocky Mountains this week, that have daytime high temperatures below freezing or near freezing. And this will likely spread across much of the upper Midwest and some of the Great Lakes region with even some near zero degree temperatures up around Hudson Bay. A little bubble in the uh, polar vortex, the cause for the cold weather moving down this week. As we switch to next week, some of this cold will linger the first part of the week. But as we get to about the middle of November, I look for a bit of a pattern switch. The jet stream will come in more west to east and the cold weather will definitely begin to relax across the region. But we still have to deal with all this rainy weather, scattered areas of rain, some of it snow uh, into the Midwest moving out of the northern plains, but more likely to move in because of the position of the jet stream. We're also going to start building up some snowpack out in the Rocky Mountains through the week. Big East Coast rain system that may even turn into something of a nor'easter. There'll be scattered areas of snow over eastern Canada, but as the week goes along, it's just going to turn into cold and dry. And then next week, we'll start watching for rain to build in the Pacific Northwest. But the rest of the nation, as that pattern shifts to the milder pattern, more of the west to east flow, the energy goes off the eastern coast. And I look for drier weather to move in around the middle of the month. Hopefully, that will linger for a while. So the harvest woes continue with more rain, maybe some snow, wet and cold conditions. But right now... Patterns are favoring about a mid-November break in the weather. 
With the all-new green fit system from Rykard, plug and play is finally a reality when using John Deere Auto Track guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Rogue Gators from Butler Machinery. Green fit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes the existing John Deere Auto Track guidance system to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. Green fit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about green fit at butlermachinery.com. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Stein Seed Company is home to one of the most prolific, highest yielding corn and soybean breeding programs in the world. When it comes to research, yield is what matters most. With the largest private soybean breeding program in the U.S. and the industry's most aggressive corn research, Stein is in a class of its own when it comes to developing new, higher performing seed. Choose genetics. Choose results. Give Shane Kylo a call at 701-866-9864 to learn what Stein Seed can do for your operation. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. The outlook for cattle prices the rest of 2018 is improving with tighter numbers and the strong economy supporting demand. We head to cattle country in South Dakota for the story. The fed cattle market has held up surprisingly well so far this year in the face of big supplies, beating analyst projections. They thought we were going to go sub-dollar like we did a year ago in October now, but uh, we stayed in there 8 or 10 and that's a good thing and that I know people keeps people current. Yearling prices have also been running above 2017, and calf prices are steady with higher quality even a bit stronger. In some cases on the yearlings, $10 higher, $10 a hundred higher, and the calves uh, maybe $5. It's a flat nine weight steer, you know, pushing up to $1.58 to $1.60, and the eight weights, you know, kind of in the 65 to 68 range. One of the factors holding up the cattle market has been strong demand, which is reflected in higher box beef prices. Our exports are up good. I just, I'm, I'm amazed at that. And I don't think people understand that they're sell, selling a lot of prime meat and choice, high choice meat to export. And producers are moving through the largest cattle numbers. You know, we've been still waiting for this big wall of cattle and somehow we've stayed current. And as long as they keep killing on Saturdays, this packer's making money, he's going to keep these cattle killed, and that's what we need. The one caution is the cheap corn and price premium in deferred live cattle futures may lead producers to feed cattle heavier. Our biggest enemy right now is probably the cheap feed, and we're probably going to feed them too long again, and too many cows are going to be put on feed. However, market experts remain optimistic about prices the rest of 2018 and into 2019, and the cattle futures are reflecting that. I think the fourth quarter will be better than we think. I, I think December at 118, 120 probably is a good value. I wouldn't be too surprised that the fat cattle market could improve a little bit, and uh, I'd hope that that does happen because we sure need to get some profit back in the feeding end of it. Net farm income projections are being adjusted for 2018, but not in the direction you might expect with the ongoing trade war. USDA had originally set the figure at $58.5 billion, which was a 12-year low. However, with a record U.S. soybean crop and near-record corn production, the agency has actually increased that figure. So USDA adjusted their farm income projection higher 
to about $66 billion in 2018. You add in any market facilitation program payments, we're looking at net farm income anywhere between 70 and 75 billion. However, Newton says that's still about $10 billion below the 10-year average for net farm income. The harvest prices for crop insurance were set on Wednesday as October wrapped up. The unofficial average price for corn is 368, up 21 cents from 2017, while the harvest price for soybeans was at $8.61, which is down $1.55 from this spring and $1.14 from last year. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, kids of all ages get some hands-on farm experience. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. DTE is your headquarters for flatbeds and service bodies for your truck. Whether you need to haul bales, heavy commercial equipment, or take every tool with you, DTE has the truck equipment you need. We have over 200 units on hand or will custom build a flatbed or service body on your truck. Like this Dewey's bale bed with dual lift cylinder arms. Lift load and handle your bales with ease. When you need help at the farm, your business, or in the oil patch, count on DTE. DTE, let us build a truck for you. Stephas. We have representatives everywhere. Through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota, we can find a buyer for what you were selling. We know how to market your farmland or equipment. Give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Stephas way. Kids and their families got to learn about plant and animal care and research at NDSU's annual moves, use, and more. They got to see farm animals up close and learn what they eat while taking part in games and contests. Mark Bauer, the interim head of the Department of Animal Sciences, says events like this become even more important as fewer people live on farms. And that's so important that we actually have that connection to our source of food and that we do take care of these animals and we are stewards of these animals but then they are a source of nutrition for us so that's just so important to make that connection of where our food comes from. This was the ninth year for this event. About 2,000 people attend each year. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember for all your ag news go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.